Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is a question which is from my end of topic worksheet for P2 um, number six, trig identities and equations. Question number 10, 10 from that worksheet. And it happens to be question number three, not from an Edexcel paper, but from a Cambridge CIE um, P1. Um, AS paper, which is from June 2004. Now, I don't teach the Cambridge syllabus at my school, and um, I, norm I mean, normally only make videos on those particular um, papers that I teach at school, because if I was to start making videos for other examining boards like Cambridge or even the UK A-level, which now the, 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 C the, the uh, Excel is split into two different types now, the international A level and the UK A level before it was one. Um, if I was starting to make one uh, videos for every single different paper and every single session that came out and all the variants, I would not have time to do anything else. So I just stick to making the videos um, generally on the papers which I have, which I teach in school, which is you know P1 to four and also S1 and M1 for the international A level syllabus and also the Cambridge. IGCSE papers, those are what we teach for, you know, at our school, and that's what I limit myself to. But once in a while, for example, in this case here, um, I've used this question from a Cambridge paper in one of my worksheets, and the student has asked me to answer it um, and to go through it. So, you know, once in a while I might do the odd question from one of these other examining boards, like, for example, in this case, when I've used the question in one of my worksheets. But otherwise, I won't really do it. Otherwise, it's going to just take too much of my time to do, f you know, so many different examining boards and all the past papers. It just takes way too much time. Maybe later on, but right now, I can't really commit that type of time, um, you know, because I've got, of course, my teaching to do at school. So now, um, as I was saying, this is um, a question from my end of topic worksheet, question number 10. And it happens also to be a question from the Cambridge June 2004, um, AS paper one, and it's question number three from that paper. It says, show that the equation sine squared theta plus three sine theta cosine theta equals four cosine squared theta can be written as a quadratic equation in tan theta. So we have to end up here with things being in terms of tan theta, right? So what I would do here is I would say, okay, I know a few things. First things. Uh, first thing that I know is that one of the identities that we've learned is that the tan of theta is the same as the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. The tan of an angle is the same as the sine of that same angle over the cosine of that same angle. That's one of the identities that we know. So what I'm thinking is if I divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared theta okay if I do that what's going to happen is it's going to help me create some tan tan thetas or tan squared thetas there okay and it will get rid of also some cosine um, squared thetas or cosine thetas so let's go ahead and do that let's divide by cosine squared theta we've got sine squared theta over cosine squared theta so that will achieve the objective of getting a tan term there, tan squared theta, plus three times sine theta cosine theta over cosine squared theta um, equals four times cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So what's happened here, this is going to become tan squared theta, which is one of the things that we need. This is like basically three, you can say that one of the cosine thetas cancels out so you've got 3 sine theta over cosine theta, which is 3 tan theta, which is, again, our objective, and equals 4, and they cancel out, leaving you with 4. 4 cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta leaves you with 4, and we've done what we had to do. In just one step, we have got rid of the sine squared thetas, the sine thetas, the cosine thetas, cosine squared thetas, and everything is now in terms of tan squared theta. So this is our quadratic equation. So we can just rewrite it if we want to make it look like a proper quadratic equation. Tan squared theta plus three 
tan theta minus 4 equals 0. If we left it like that, it's still fine. Okay, so there we have the answer to part 1. Okay, for part 2 now, it says, hence or otherwise, solve the equation in part 1 for theta between 0 and 180 degrees. So I'm going to take this equation, tan squared theta plus 3 tan theta minus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to say, to make it easier for us, sometimes students like to, for example, say, let um, tan theta equal x, for example, because it looks something more familiar if we write this as, you know, then that would mean tan squared theta would therefore be x squared. Okay, so I can replace the tan squared theta with x squared and the tan theta with x, and it looks something more familiar, that's all. We can factorize this. I think we can factorize this. We have x, x, 1 is plus, 1 is minus. It looks like you can have plus 4 and minus 1. That's right. So you've got x equals minus 4 and x equals 1. So now we can say the tan of theta is equal to negative 4 and the tan of theta equals 1. We want to solve this in degrees. So we take the inverse tan of minus 4. And we take the inverse tan of 1. Now, the inverse tan of 1 is 45 degrees. Okay, that's one solution. And the inverse tan of minus 4, minus 4. Take your calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode. Inverse tan of minus 4. That's going to give you minus 75.963 um, minus 75.9637 now this solution here is out of the range okay but it doesn't mean that we don't have any solution in the range because the tan curve repeats itself every 180 degrees the tan curve repeats itself every 180 degrees okay so basically why is it not one of these straight for? Basically, what we can say is that the tan curve looks something like this. Okay, you have your asymptote at 90 degrees. You have an asymptote at 90 degrees. And you have another asymptote at minus 90 degrees. Okay, so it looks something like this. It will go... Have that kind of shape. Not quite, quite as straight there but anyway so what we found is minus 75.963 something further down a bit really okay we found something over here that's the that's the value that we found okay now that gives you a negative answer okay so this is minus four okay it gives you a negative angle so when we put inverse tan of minus four it gave us the calculator gave us this angle over here all right now the tan curve repeats every 180 degrees okay so there is another solution somewhere over here okay there's another solution somewhere over here which shares the tan ratio that we just found just okay and that angle is 180 degrees more than this angle because it just repeats every 180 degrees so here we have 0, here we have 90, okay, here we have um, 180, and here we have, this is going to be 270, the next place we have an asymptote, okay, repeats every 180 degrees, okay, and then yeah, you can have something like that, all right, so basically this angle here is 180 more than this angle, so if I take this angle here, if I say the angle that I want is minus 75.9637 plus 180 degrees, I'll get the other angle. So I'll take my angle here and I add 180 to it. And that gives me 104.0362, 104.0362, which gives you 104.0 degrees to, to one decimal place. So our answers in the end end up to be theta equals 45 degrees. That's exact and 104.0 degrees, which is rounded to one decimal place. 
Okay, so for the tan curve, even though our calculator gave us an answer which is not in our range, which was from 0 to 180, we can find an, an, an angle that shares the same tan ratio of minus 4 in our range by adding 180 to that angle and finding an angle in our range. And we can't use any other angles because they're all outside of the range. The next time that this gives you, you know, this angle of um, minus 4 will be somewhere over here, which is outside of the range. Okay, and the same with 45 degrees. It gives you the value of 1. There's no other place in the range. There's another place over here somewhere, which is 180 more than 45, but of course that's outside of our range. Okay, so there's how you answer this question. Um, I hope that was clear. Um, now, I don't know if I will be doing other questions from this particular, um, you know, paper, but if I ever do, it will. I'll make a playlist and put it over here. And um, questions from the um, Tropic of Trigonometry um, from P2 of, uh, you know, um, Edexcel, I will add this, I'll add this question to that, which will be over here. Questions from this end of topic worksheet number six, trig identity equations. I will add it to this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel. And on the top of the page, I will take you to actually a P2 and um, past paper from Edexcel. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you soon.